Hello and welcome to episode 20 of the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor and I will be your host. I am coming to you from Henderson, Nevada, which is where I'm from and where I live with my husband Brandon, our three-year-old son Angus, our house cat Oscar, and soon, coming at the end of March, we are expecting a new member of our family, a little boy. Thank you so much for joining me here in my little corner of YouTube. It means so much to me. If you are a returning viewer and subscriber, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. If you are a new viewer and subscriber, thank you so much for taking the time to check us out here and also choosing to click subscribe and to like the video. Please don't forget to do that if you like what you see here. Click a thumbs up, click subscribe, not just because it brings a smile to my face, but because it really does help the podcast grow and reach more people. So definitely take the time to hit thumbs up and to subscribe to the channel. You can find me on Instagram. I am at wool needles hands. You can also find me on Instagram at fiber.for.the.people. That's the Instagram account linked to my business, which is a hand dyed yarn business. You can see everything that's going on over there. There is going to be a shop update on Tuesday, January 30th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time with lots of goodies. I'm going to be talking about that later in the show. You can also get in touch with me on Ravelry and join the Ravelry group by heading over to Ravelry, going to the groups tab, searching wool needles hands a knitting podcast check out what we've got going on over there join the group we have a really great knit along going on right now that's actually a year-long knit along which I'm going to talk about in a little bit plus lots of really great conversation so join over there and be a part of the wool needles hands community over there as well you can also get in touch with me via email just email me at wool needles hands at gmail.com if you have a question about something you saw on the podcast or you just want to get in touch or perhaps you'd like to donate a prize I am seeking out prize donations for the year-long knit along that we have going on you can just get in touch with me over there at the Gmail account. Um, that's the best way to get in touch with me. I'm sure to see that correspondence. Instagram is a little bit different. Sometimes I don't see all the messages that come in right away and I really want to be able to get back to you um, in as timely a manner as possible. So definitely use that if you'd like to get in touch. Also, don't forget to comment down below on anything that you see. If you have anything to add to the conversation, please. It's really fun to read the comments that you guys have and it's just nice to hear the things that you have to say about the different topics that come up in the podcast. So definitely don't forget to use the comment section down below. All information about this podcast can be seen down in the doobly-doo or the down bar below. I leave all my show notes down there. It's just easier for me to put the show notes, the timestamps for each of the episodes all right down there. Um, the timestamps are really useful. Sometimes these episodes tend to be pretty long. So I try to put segment times down in the show notes below where you can just click on the timestamp and it will take you to that particular segment. If you decide you want to uh, come and go, uh, from the podcast. Maybe you can't watch it all in one sitting, which I totally understand. So that's there for your convenience as well. We had a giveaway just recently because we hit a big milestone here at the podcast. We surpassed 4,000 subscribers, which is huge. And so I hosted a giveaway. I have the giveaway prize all wrapped up and ready to be shipped out. And I have the giveaway winner. So I would like to announce the giveaway winner, but first I'm gonna show the prize that this person is going to win. It is wrapped, so I can't open it up and show you all the, you know, the details. But if you'd like to see that, check out the previous episode. So the winner is going to be receiving a project bag from Spool Stories, which Marilitza from Spool Stories makes the most amazing project bags. I'm actually using one of her project bags right now. It is just beautiful, so well made, such great attention to detail. It has the nice drawstring closure just like this. I really love it. So the winner is going to be receiving a project bag just like that one, but the fabric is different. So here is um, the fabric here. In addition to that, they will also be receiving a skein of Fiber for the People yarn in the strawberry oatmeal colorway. And in addition to that, I've included a bar of soap from Woolen & Co. And she makes some of the most amazing wool wash soaps. And so this will be coming in the prize package as well for the giveaway winner. So all of this is coming together and it's ready to go. And the winner of this giveaway is Stephanie Galea. Stephanie, congratulations. Thank you so much for participating in the giveaway. The giveaway question was, what is it that keeps you coming back to your knitting or crocheting or fiber craft? What keeps you going? Her response was, there's nothing as satisfying 
doing is making something completely from scratch, building it up bit by bit and having a tangible finished object at the end, especially if it's something that you can wear and would otherwise have to buy from a store. I personally also just love crafts that take a long time to make meditative, and I usually am more proud of and fulfilled by the final product. Stephanie, that's a really, really great kind of insight into this question, and I think that so many people share that perspective as well. I was so excited to read all of the comments that you guys left for this giveaway because it really made me realize that a lot of us need this craft. It's, it's a hobby, I guess, but some of us actually would go so far as to say it's not a hobby, it's just a way of life because it does calm us, it soothes our nerves, it makes us feel settled. And that was an overwhelming majority of the responses in this particular giveaway question thread. So I was, it was really cool to read the different things that you guys had to say about that. So if you are interested in reading some of these responses to the giveaway question, head over to the uh, previous episode, check out the comment section below. It's really pretty cool to find that so many of us do this craft for the same reasons. But anyway, Stephanie, thank you so much for participating. Everybody else, thank you so much for participating in the giveaway. Stephanie, get in touch with me via email at woolneedleshands at gmail.com. Give me your information so I can send this prize out to you right away. We have a year-long knit-along going on right now at the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast, and I am so excited about it. This is the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Knit-Along, and the goal of this is to knit one hat every month, and each month has a different theme. Check out the rules and, uh, I guess, guidelines for this knit-along over at the Ravelry page, or you can check it out in the previous episode of the podcast, but each month is going to have a different theme. January is knitting a hat with a pom-pom, and it's still going on. People are are still working on this, but it does end on February 1st, and that's the deadline for submitting your finished objects for the January um, portion of this hat knit along. You don't have to participate in every month, so if you're just hearing about this now, you can jump on board February or March. It doesn't matter. You just participate month by month, but that's what we're going to be doing for this whole year of 2018, is knitting a new hat every month. So like I said, January is pom-pom hat month, and I was, I'm like floored by how many of you guys are participating, number one, and the amazing pom-pom hats that you guys are coming up with. We have nip and the yarn pom-poms. We have faux fur pom-poms. It's just, it's really, really cool. So I'm going to show here some of the finished objects that have come through for this knit along in the Ravelry group so you guys can get some inspiration. And plus just to show you some of the great things that are going on. But I also want to mention too that if you are a um, an Etsy seller, uh, you make project bags, you dye yarn, what have you, if you have something that you would like to donate to the show that I can share on the show here, um, and use as a prize for this year long knit along. I am seeking out prize donations for this knit along. There is um, going to be, you know, obviously 12 months that we're working here. So please just get in touch with me if you would like to donate a prize to the show. I would really, really appreciate it. Plus, I love to see all of the various different little businesses that are out there um, creating these amazing you know, goodies for us. So just get in touch with me if you are interested in doing that. But without further ado, I want to show you guys some of the finished objects coming through the finished object thread over on the Ravelry group for the pom pom hat January portion of the knit along. <laughs> hats and for all different people. I mean, there's some people that are knitting them for themselves, some people knitting them for family, some for charity. It really is up to you where you want to send your hat um, in this particular case. That's completely up to you. 
February is a new month with a new theme. So I want to chat with you guys a little bit about what's coming up if you are going to be continuing the knit along for each of the consecutive months. Remember, the more you submit, the better, because at the very end of the entire uh, knit along, I am going to be selecting a winner from all of the different threads. I'm kind of working out how the prizes are gonna go. Um, there's going to be a small prize at the end of each month, but then there's going to be a grand prize at the end of the entire knit along from all of the submissions and all of the FO threads. Um, how I'm gonna do that, that'll come to me when that comes, I guess you could say. But I'm gonna do little prizes as we go and then that one grand prize at the end. Okay. But let's talk about February. February, the theme is to knit a hat for a person of the opposite sex. So if you are a girl, knit a hat for a boy. If you are a boy or a man, knit a hat for a girl or a woman. There were some questions that came to me uh, about this particular month. And I just wanna let everybody know that take this as you will. Quite honestly, you can knit a hat for somebody that you love since February is the month of Valentine's Day. You can knit a hat for a significant other, whoever that person may be. Um, don't think too hard on this, but I, I just threw it out there, knitting for the opposite sex, just because it's kind of a way to knit a hat that's obviously not going to be for you, it's going to be for somebody else. If that's your dad or your brother or your sister or your mother, it's really Take it, take it as you want. Um, that's kind of, I'm leaving that up to you uh, with how you want to approach that. I put a little bit more detail into this portion of the knit along over on the Ravelry page. You can check it out there, but that's really what's coming up in February. So this time you will be knitting a hat for somebody else um, in this particular case. Now, whether you know this person or you're just knitting a hat uh, that is following a pattern for a man, if you're a woman and vice versa, it's completely up to you. So kind of keep that in mind. It's pretty open to interpretation for that. This will be ending on March 1st. So definitely get involved if you're interested. This is kind of a cool opportunity if you are going to be giving a gift for Valentine's Day. Um, this could potentially be a gift for that, or you could just save it and use it as a future holiday gift. So who knows? Also, quick update to this knit along. Crochet is completely fine. So we can call it a K-A-L, a C-A-L. It's really up to you if you are a crocheter, if you're a loom knitter, if you're a regular knitter, um, it, whatever it is, bring it on because I like to see them coming from all different fiber crafts. So you can crochet, you can knit, you can loom knit. It's also completely up to you. Another question that I had about this knit along is, are whips appropriate? Can we use whips for this? Okay, we all have whips that we really need to be working on. Originally I said, no whips allowed. You need to start the project from scratch um, at the beginning of the month. However, I changed my mind about that just because we need to burn through some of these whips. If you have a hat whip that is appropriate for one of the upcoming themes, you can use that um, for that part of the knit along. But the only thing I ask is that you wait until that month comes around and then continue work on that project. Because it's a knit along, I want each month to be knit um, along with everybody else. So instead of knitting things ahead of time and having them finished by the time that month comes along, I'd really prefer it if you waited until that month to work on that particular project. So we truly are knitting along the theme together and posting our progress on social media together, um, if that makes sense. If you have any questions about that or if that's not quite clear, just let me know. Um, but that's, that's what I ask about that. But whips are totally fine. I know we have to burn through some of those whips. So bring those on as well because we could all use the extra incentive to get those things finished. So join us for the Year of Hats Knit Along. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm already just super excited and inspired by the things that you guys have shared on the Ravelry page. So keep it coming, um, keep participating. Remember that you don't have to participate in each month, but participate as much as you'd like. There's lots of motivation out there to knit hats right now. I think everybody may be a little bit ready to move away from doing all of the socks. I mean, we're all knitting socks, right? Cause we love knitting socks. At least I'm knitting socks, I love them. But maybe we need something to shake it up a little bit. So this is a really perfect opportunity. So join us, get involved, get started. Some of you are super fast knitters and can work out a pom-pom hat in no time. So jump on board. There's still a few days left in January. So that is it for knit alongs right now. I do have a couple ideas coming in the works of things that I'd like to do this year, but right now I'm just focusing on this knit along at this particular point in time. It has been a hustle bustle kind of week for me. My husband was away out of town on a baseball tournament. He coaches high school baseball. And so the team was in California for a baseball tournament all last weekend. Um, so I wasn't able to get the, I, when he's home on the weekends, it's amazing how, I mean, that's so helpful because I can get a lot done. 
um, because he really helps me around with my son and also just with the various different things I'm doing for the shop. He really helps a lot, but he wasn't here this last weekend. And so there were some things I needed to work in and, and ways that I needed to work around that. And that's, and that's fine. We, um, we definitely worked around it. My son is actually very helpful in that regard. He, he does pretty well when I'm working to, with yarn and getting things ready for shop updates, but it's been really, really busy. Um, I'm preparing not only for that shop update on Tuesday, but I have a really fun kit collaboration that I'm going to be doing with Chelsea from Darn Yarn MN, which I'll talk about a little bit later. So just lots going on. Um, and I feel like now that the week is pretty much over, it's Saturday, I'm sitting with you guys, I'm filming the podcast, which I know is probably four or five days late, maybe not quite that much. Um, I'm happy to kind of culminate everything. The, the shop update coming on Tuesday is going to be so much fun, chock full of a lot of fun uh, yarn, yarny goodness, I guess you could say. But I'm just really happy to kind of be winding it in. And so I decided the appropriate tea for me today or beverage for me today would be some chamomile tea um, just to kind of like calm me down because I, I need something to just mellow me out. Uh, calm me down from the really long week of, of working really hard. So this is just perfect. So I actually am drinking it in this super large sunflower mug that I've shown before. Um, and I'm using Cuppa, um, Nature's Cuppa, I should say. It's Nature's Cuppa Organic Chamomile. So here's the little tag. This cup is really heavy. <laughs> so... I don't know if you can see that, but it's just chamomile tea. I have two little bags in here because the little tea bags, I mean, they're really little. They're not your average size tea bags. So I put two in there and I'm sweetening it. Typically I sweeten my chamomile tea with honey, but this time around I'm sweetening it with agave syrup. My husband has been making these little energy bars with chia and flax and apricots and all sorts of good things. And he's been using agave syrup in there. And so we have it in the house. And so I've been sweetening my coffee in the morning and my tea and it's really great. I feel like you can use far less of the agave syrup than the honey. It's just a lot sweeter and it has a really good neutral sweet flavor. So that's what's in my cup right now. Some chamomile tea and agave syrup. Make sure that you have yourself a nice warm cozy beverage or a cool beverage, whatever it is that's working for you right now. Maybe even pause the podcast, head off to go get your beverage and bring your knitting back and get ready to settle in guys because I have a show for you. Nine-year-old Joseph Ford and knitting friend Nina Dodd worked together on a sweater collection and the purpose of the collection was to create knit sweaters that were camouflaged into the printed backgrounds in an urban setting like a subway station or a tiled bathroom wall. It's really pretty fascinating. Each of these sweaters took upwards of 40 to 50 hours for Nina to create. They were put in front of these textured and graphic surfaces to camouflage seamlessly and it's really really pretty inspiring. Joseph Ford who is a photographer decided to do this after talking to his friend Nina Dodd who is a knitter about various different printed backgrounds that would camouflage into really common textures and graphic backgrounds that we see in urban settings like in bus stations or tiled bathroom walls or the seats in a bus themselves and so they decided to create this collection of sweaters and one of them my favorite one which is really cool is actually on a track uh, like a track and field track a woman is sitting down on the track and her garment blends perfectly perfectly in with the blue and white stripes that run the oval of the track and field track. And I thought that that was really cool, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a little bit of this collection that was created by Nina Dodd and Joseph Ford. <laughs> So cool. And if you've noticed, I don't know if you're familiar with street artists. One of the models that he chose to photograph here was Monsieur Chat, who is a French um, street artist, if I'm not mistaken. And he's actually painted on the wall one of his famous cat, uh, you know, 
images that he paints on the wall. The sweater that he's wearing is actually knit in such a way that it blends in perfectly with the cat that he paints on the wall. So I don't know, I just thought this was super cool. Another really awesome way to bring knitting out into the limelight, um, which it really has become such an amazing medium for expression in like the art world and especially the street art world. So this is really cool. I, I can only imagine how much time cumulatively it would have taken to complete this collection, um, but not only to complete it, but to like come up with the different patterns and textures and to have to go out into these areas and these settings and to really go into great detail about these particular patterns and textures to be able to recreate such an amazing um, to, to be able to blend them so perfectly. I mean, the one with the dog wearing the dog sweater in front of the bush and it just, it's really, it's incredible. I just wanted to share that with you guys so you could see uh, something that's going on in the knit world right now and the creative fiber arts world and how it's being blended with something like photography and street art. So thank you, Joseph Ford and Nina Dodd for your contribution. So I'm starting a new segment to the podcast called Itty Bitty Nitty Gritty Little Questions. And the reason why I decided to start this segment was because I have found that in the course of my knitting career, I guess you could say, there are little questions that pop up that are maybe considered silly questions or dumb questions that perhaps we should already know because of our more veteran status or intermediate status in this craft. And so we wonder why we don't know them and why we're continuing to ask these questions. So this is a place where we're going to collect those questions and share them here because we all have them. We all have those questions that we lean on Google to answer because we figure if we can just type it into Google, we don't have to actually verbalize the questions and risk embarrassing ourselves when it's probably something we should really already know, but chances are a lot of other people don't know them. You catch my drift. I was inspired to do this by my mom actually because she had such a question and she was approaching the question in such a way that she was thinking it was gonna be a dumb question. So she was asking me, she's like, I have this question. It's probably a stupid question and I really should know the answer to it, but I don't. And so I wanted to ask you. So she asked me um, and I thought to myself, that's actually not a dumb question, number one. It's a simple question, it's a small question, and a technical question, but it's certainly not a dumb question. So here was her question. It was, do you count the cast on stitches as your first row in your project? Really good question, actually, because it's something that some of us probably know, but we don't think about the fact that we know it, we just know it. And the answer to that question is no, you don't count your cast on row. That's not considered row number one. It's the next row. It's the first row that you physically knit with two needles. That's considered your first row. Interesting that she asked it and it's an important question to ask if you're not 100% sure. And it's really funny sometimes how all of a sudden these questions just pop into your mind and you think, I've been going along this long and I didn't know the answer to this question. It's amazing I made it this far. But I want to have a place, a venue, where we can ask these questions. So what I've done is I've created a thread on the Ravelry group for the sole purpose of asking these questions. And we have a few questions in the thread already, and I'm going to share these questions with you guys here. I am going to do my best to answer them here on the podcast if I answer them incorrectly. That's my own misconception. You can correct me down below in the comments, and I would be more than happy to make that correction on the Ravelry group. But the questions that are asked on the Ravelry thread will be answered on the thread, but I will ask them here with the accompanying answer just to share them with you, and I will keep the person who asked the question completely anonymous um, because that's just what I'm going to do. But it's just a really cool way to kind of hear some of the questions that are out there because... We all have them. Okay, so we have two questions in the thread right now. And so the first question I'm gonna share with you is, here's another question. There are several ways to join a new color. Does the type of yarn, wool versus cotton, bamboo versus silk, etc., affect the way we switch colors? If just going to a new ball of same color, should we join at the edge or is it okay to join in the middle of a row? That's a really great question. And I actually have never really actively thought about this question. I don't knit stripes or multicolored projects very often, but this is my answer to this question. And I haven't done a lot of in-depth research, but this is just from my own personal experience with this particular kind of knitting. If you have any other answer to this question, leave it down in the comments section below. So my answer would be, it doesn't technically matter what kind of yarn you're using when it comes to switching color. However, it's always best to switch your color on the edge so that way you don't have to worry about tying in a, you know, 
tying in any kind of a new yarn in the middle of a row that could be more noticeable. And that's actually not even just with switching colors, that's just adding a new ball of yarn in general. When it comes to the different fiber content, what I would consider is the drape effect of the yarn. Um, if you're using a silk yarn, it definitely is a heavy, it's a drapier yarn. And so maybe attaching that color in the middle of a row or um, attaching a new ball of yarn in the middle of a row will affect that drape a little bit and it might be best to attach it on the edge. I figure just to be safe, always try to add your balls of yarn on the edge of your work, on the edge of your garment or at the beginning of a round if you're knitting something in the round. But ultimately, technically it really doesn't matter. Okay the second question that we have in the thread is this one bothered me a lot when I was first learning and it still catches me up sometimes if I'm not paying attention. When counting rows does the row currently on the needles count? For example you've knit two rows but only one row is finished. Do you count one or two? That's actually a really great question and I have a project here that I can hold up to kind of show um, what's what's being talked about in this particular case and this is just a little dishcloth. Um, I call the stitches that are on the needle, I call those my active stitches and that's because they're the ones that are going to be, you know, worked next. But when I'm counting up all of my rows, like this is a garter stitch project here, so when I'm counting up my rows, I would not count what's currently on the needle. I would count, let's say, one and then two, which is right below the needle. Kind of hard to see here, I have to pull down a little bit, but we have one garter rib right here, and then we have one set of stitches right below the needle. That would be two little rows right there. And then this row will be our third row, or however many rows you have. So this would not be counted in what you've currently worked. This would be what's upcoming. So once you've knit this, that will then be your next row. So you don't, when you're counting rows in a pattern, or it says knit five rows, you would knit five rows and you would not count what's currently on the needle because that's going to be your sixth row. So thank you. Those of you that have contributed to this thread, thank you so much. Keep them coming because I know they're out there. Um, I'll do my best to answer. I'm not going to guarantee that I'm going to be 100% every single time. I'll try to do my research the best I can and pull it from experience. But that's why we have a community. So if I say anything that's inaccurate, let me know down in the comment section. Head over to the thread. Feel free to answer these questions yourself and ask them over there as well so I can share them here on the podcast. You guys, I'm still making lots of progress. I have a hoe and I have two foes to share you, with you guys today. Um, and I'm really excited about that. I haven't been, you don't always work on all the projects that you have going religiously and monogamously all the time. So I'm gonna share with you guys, like I've done in the past few episodes, the things that I've been working on uh, most since we last spoke. But first I wanna share with you guys my hoe and then my finished objects. So the first, Ho, actually the only hoe that I have this time. And this was actually just whipped out and worked and finished the other night because I finally had some time to sit down and get some knitting in. It was just one of those days where I was desperately seeking that time to get some knitting in. And I pulled this one out because I figured it was so close. I needed to get it off the needles um, because not only do I wanna get this one off the needles, but I wanna start the next one so I can wear these suckers. But this is another uh, sock of a pair of family work socks. Now I knit a pair of family work socks a few episodes back that kind of looks like the traditional sock monkey sock. So if you wanna, if you're interested in that, you can check out previous episodes. I'll show a picture here. So these are the family work socks from Bernat Design Studios. The website or the pattern comes from Yarnspirations and it's called the family work socks. I wanted to knit another pair in a smaller size than the previous pair because even though I love those so much and they are supposed to be pretty chunky, I felt like um, after a while they maybe became a little too chunky for my feet and so I wanted something a little bit more snug um, and that's what I have here. So without further ado, here is the first of the next pair of family work socks that I'm gonna be knitting. Now, I was a little bit impatient with these because I wanted to get them finished. And so the leg is significantly shorter than it is on my other one. And that's totally fine for me. The previous pair, the leg is really long so you can scrunch it down and it looks super cute, but I didn't really need it to be that long. Um, I just wanted a nice pair of cozy, warm socks. And so I did, I shortened the leg a little bit here and cheated, which was fine because it 
got it off my needles faster and I can move on and finish the other. So I am knitting these in Patton's Classic Wool Worsted. Um, a really, it's my one of my favorites, if not my favorite budget, you know, store-bought yarn. I'm using just the gray. Um, this is called Erin, and then this is navy blue. And I really like the color combination, kind of like a, another classic color combination. It's just, they're so cozy. And this particular yarn is really, really warm. It's 100% um, untreated wool, so it's nice and warm. It's hand wash. But yeah, I really, really love these. I'm ready to cast on to my next pair because they really fly. Worsted weight socks are a lot of fun to knit just because... When you're so used to working on, you know, fingering weight socks, it's kind of a refreshing change because they do just fly off the needles. These ones are definitely no exception. Um, I just did this with a, a, it's a two by two rib and my leg here is a nine inch leg as opposed to the 13 inch leg that it calls for and heel flap and gusset and a rounded toe at the end. And that's what the pattern called for. That's actually typically what I do. Um, so yeah, they're really great. I, um... I did notice though, yeah, when I was weaving in my ends, you can see some of the gray yarn is peeking through. Yeah, I need to fix that, but hey, things happen, right? So that is my first half object that I wanna share with you guys. I'm super, super excited um, to have those off the needles. Okay, my first finished object is really exciting because these are my uh, minky socks. I'm calling them my minky socks because I haven't come up with an official name for them yet. It is an original design by yours truly, and I'm, I'm really happy to have these done. And I know several of you have gotten in touch with me about test knitting this pattern, and I have your emails. I'm paying attention, I swear. I just have been trying to get them finished. The pattern is almost completely ready to be sent out to those of you that asked to test knit. So you will be receiving a response from me soon if you haven't received one already, um, because I'm really, really excited to release this pattern. You guys, these socks are so pretty. So they are finished and I'm gonna share them with you now. Keep in mind, if you were watching the last episode, these socks are different because I knit the first one a certain way and then I wanted to make some modifications to the pattern. So I knit the second sock um, differently. And the reason I did that was because I figured instead of going back and taking out the first sock and doing that one all over again, I may as well just have the two that I could use to compare. So let's see how I can hold these up for you. So here they are, the finished pair of what I am calling my minky socks. Uh, I'm, I've got some really cool, sub, I've gotten some really cool suggestions of names for these socks from viewers that I'm really, really considering. You guys have some really creative ideas on your names for these, um, but I haven't settled on one yet. So let me go ahead and show you um, each of them separately. So this is the first sock that I knit here. And as I mentioned in the previous episode, um, I made some changes. And the changes that I made to this sock are in the heel flap and in the, the gauge, I guess you could say. So this sock was knit on a size needle here that is two sizes smaller than the needle I used to knit this portion of the sock. And it's fine, um, it definitely was fine, but I decided I wanted to keep um, the size of needle consistent throughout the whole sock and go a size down. So I actually continued with the size I used for this portion all the way throughout the sock on the, the second sock that I knit. It gave a little bit more stitch definition to this stitch pattern here. So here's the stitch pattern. It's kind of hard to really see it because it's not stretched over a foot, but it's a really pretty open work kind of lacy stitch pattern. And I love it. I love this like racing stripe of stockinette stitch. But the second sock, which I will show you here, that's what I changed. So now instead of just a basic stockinette heel flap, I actually did a slip stitch heel, which is my favorite go-to heel. I love the texture. Somebody actually said it would look really great with an eye of partridge heel, and that's absolutely right. It would look beautiful with that. Um, it's great that we can kind of adjust heel flaps, how we see fit. Those are things that you can kind of modify in any pattern. Um, but I really like the slip stitch rib heel flap here. And then Again, I used a smaller needle for the body of the sock. And not only does it fit nice and snug on my foot, which is, I think, a little bit more what I was looking for than the previous, um, it does show off that stitch pattern a little bit better. So when it's on the foot, it's, it's really very beautiful. So this, right now, I'm just calling this my minky socks. But this pattern is pretty much 
ready to be sent out to test knitters. I have all the test knitters for this. So if you did um, inquire about test knitting, I will get back in touch with you. It will be sent as a PDF pattern. It will be, um, I believe it's going to be sent as an expiring download. So you have to download it right away um, because the link will expire. So just keep that in mind. So that pattern will be coming soon. I will keep you posted. It requires a DK weight yarn. I used actually not even an entire skein. I had a significant amount of yarn left over of my Vigor base, which is Fiber for the People yarn. I used, this is the minky colorway on the Vigor base, which is 100% Superwash New Zealand Polworth. And I almost want to say it used maybe a little over a half of a skein, which is pretty great. So these are the minky socks. It is an original pattern. I'm going to be sending it out to test knitters and then it will be available soon over at fiberforthepeopleyarn.com and also on Ravelry. So keep your eyes out for that. Okay, so my last finished object that I have for you guys today is part of the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Knit Along. It is a pom-pom hat that I knit for my sister-in-law. This is the Picoline pattern. I think I'm saying that correctly. I would put it on, but I'm keeping it nice and pristine for my sister. So I'm just gonna show it to you here the best that I can. So it is the Picoline hat, and it is a really adorable, slouchy, pom-pom style hat. And it is by uh, designed by Jocelyn Tunney for O Wool. And I love it so much, you guys. I actually, so this hat, um, the pattern doesn't call for a rolled brim, but I know that my sister-in-law really, really likes to roll the brims of her hats. And so I just knit a longer ribbed brim here so that she could roll it. Um, and that's it, pretty much it. The regular design is adorable without the rolled brim, but quite honestly, I, I prefer it with the rolled brim. I'm knitting this, or I finished this, using Baby Cakes a Alpaca. It's 100% pure baby alpaca from Fiber for the People. This is in the Going Out Jeans colorway. I don't currently have this colorway in the shop because I dyed it up special for my sister, but I do have lots of beautiful pastel colors in the shop right now on the Baby Cake space. Perfect uh, quantity for knitting up a hat like this. I didn't even use quite an entire skein for the entire thing, including the pom-pom. Um, yeah, so it's perfect, perfect quantity for a hat like this. So if you have an interest in knitting a Picoline hat um, and you need a good yarn for it, definitely check out the Baby Cakes yarn in the Fiber for the People shop right now. It's so amazingly soft. Get in there and look at that like beautiful halo if it'll focus on it for you oh it's so beautiful i really really love it and then of course the pom-pom i used a clover pom-pom maker because i'm obsessed with them they make the most beautiful pom-poms i want to make all the pom-poms now but that is the picoline hat i really recommend that if you're going to knit this using um, an alpaca yarn or just a basic bulky weight yarn. And, and I know that the old wool bulky yarn that's called for in the pattern is a little bit bulkier than your standard bulky yarn. Um, so the hat that is in the pattern, I think it looks a little bit bigger than this one when I finished it. But I really recommend vigorously blocking the hat because you're gonna notice that once you're finished knitting it prior to blocking, it almost seems like it's smaller than it ought to be, but that's because you really just need to vigorously block it. I blocked mine on a 10 inch dinner plate, so I soaked it in some nice wool wash and some warm water for about 20 minutes, threw it in the spin cycle to get out that excess water, and then I stuck it over a 10 inch dinner plate and let it dry. It took this two days to dry. The alpaca really holds on to that water. Um, and I even shaped the brim of the hat here kind of around the bottom portion of the plate so that it would create this nice little shape here. There's shaping happening in the pattern by itself. That's why you have this rounded um, kind of edge, I guess you could say, but the, the blocking definitely helps. So I wouldn't steam block this. I would definitely block it over a plate. Um, depending on how big and billowy you want your hat, that could determine the size of the plate that you use. But yeah, I would recommend doing that over a 10 inch plate. But that is my Picoline hat, and this is my first hat of the um, knit hats for the year of hats, Cal, that we're doing over here at the Wool Needles Hands podcast with the adorable little pom pom. So this is going in the mail ASAP to my sister in Texas. 
So that's all my hoes and foes. I'm really getting excited about some of the whips that I'm working on right now because I wanna get them off the needles. Um, I resurrected a few, so I'm gonna share those with you next. So like I mentioned, I have some whips that I resurrected and I have one that I'm, uh, well, I guess two, I guess you could say that I'm actively working on right now. Um, a couple of my works in progress I haven't been actively working on just because the next one I'm going to show you is a little time sensitive and so I want to kind of get it off the needles. And then the other two, I started working on them and then it was just like distraction because I was having so much fun knitting that. Uh, I have my Marlebon cardigan that I am working on and I also have a, uh, it's called the stash busting sweater. Um, I'm knitting it in all one color. I've mentioned it in previous episodes. Those two works in progress are sitting in my basket and I'm definitely gonna get back to those but I wanted to work on um, some more time sensitive items and some other projects that I really wanna just get off the needles because I want to wear them. And I know that because the weather is actually warming up a little bit here that my Marlebon cardigan and my stash busting sweater probably really won't be worn until next season anyway and I couldn't really fit them right now as it is so so let me go ahead and show you the first uh, work in progress that I have actively been working on this is the baby blanket that I'm knitting for our future little one coming at the end of March previously um, I was working on the Robin blanket which is a baby blanket by Mindy designs and I really love the pattern of this blanket. Um, here's a picture of it here. It's really beautiful. Uh, I, I love the stitch pattern. But what was happening is that as I was knitting it, it was just becoming so cumbersome. To achieve that stitch pattern, you, um, you have to do lots of knit two, knit two together through the front and the back loop. And um, it was just super slow. And it really made me not want to work on it because it was so slow and I knew I wanted to get the baby blanket finished. I wanted it to be pretty, but I also wanted it to be finished in time for the baby and not something that I just put on the shelf because I didn't want to work on it. It just became tight and uncomfortable and I just wasn't motivated to finish it. So I decided that I was going to scrap that pattern and start over with something that I knew would be easy, mindless, and really fun to knit and that would keep me coming back to the project. And, and so without further ado, this is the Summer Sidewalk Blanket by 5410 Studio. Um, I considering I scrapped the other one and started working on this one. I've actually been doing pretty good. So I'm going to hold it up so you can see. Um, whoops. I love the simplicity of this pattern, the little garter ribs that are happening here. It's almost just like a really thick ribbing going on with the garter stitch edges. I just, I don't know. There's something beautiful and geometric about it. And I just, I love it. It's a absolute pleasure to knit clearly because it's tons of garter stitch. So you're just knitting away. There is purling involved, but it's not even a thing because it's just so easy. The, the stitching is super easy. Everything is super fast. I really love it. And so I've gotten that. I think it took me maybe, I want to say like four days of knitting to get where I am right now. So I am going to be putting a lot of my attention back into this in the next few days because I really just need that easy, mindless, you know, fast knitting, and this is definitely it for me. And the yarn that I'm using is Softy Baby by Bernat. It's the cotton yarn, and it's in the aqua color, and it's really a great yarn to knit with. It's surprisingly easy to knit with considering it's cotton. I, I, I tend to think that cotton yarn can be a little bit, um, not tricky, but just kind of a pain sometimes because it has no stretch, no give. And so sometimes you really have to kind of get your needle into the stitches, but the combination of, you know, needle size and yarn size here really makes that not even an issue. So I love this yarn for little baby projects. It's so soft. Um, it has a beautiful drape, as you can see, it's not stiff at all. It, um, I want to kind of fold it so you can see it folded and you'll, you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about here, but it's just really kind of got like a delicate drape to it. So here it is folded up and you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. The nice delicate kind of drape that it has. It's really nice and squishy. It's just a really great yarn for, for this kind of thing. So I'm really excited to keep working on this 
great blanket pattern. So the pattern comes in multiple sizes. There's actually a baby blanket size, which is the smallest size. Then there is a small size, which is a crib or a lap blanket. And then of course you have your medium, large and extra large. And that's kind of more your throw um, blanket size all the way up to maybe like a small queen size or a full size blanket, but it's, so it's definitely adjustable. And I would be totally interested um, in knitting this up in a larger size just to have around the house because I love it so much. I just love the way it looks. It's modern and it's got kind of a nice clean line look to it. So if you're looking for a baby blanket pattern or a blanket pattern in general, definitely check out the summer sidewalk pattern. I highly recommend it. It really flies off the needle. It's, it's not even a thing. It's super easy. I just love it. I really can't say enough good stuff about it. So 5410 Studio, thank you so much for such a great baby blanket pattern that really came in in the clutch. It was what I needed. And this is living in my ink bags project bag. Um, love these bags. If you haven't heard of ink bags, definitely check them out. Erica makes really, really beautiful project bags. This is a peekaboo project bag. I love peekaboo project bags because you can get motivated by seeing what's in there. So that is what this is living in right now. Another time sensitive project um, that I'm working on and I was really trying to, I was telling myself, I'm gonna knit one a day until the baby comes and you know how that works. I, it, I didn't set it as like a solid goal, but I was thinking if I can knit one of these every day until the baby comes, then I will have a ton of these when the baby comes. Um, and that is grandma's favorite dishcloth. So this is the grandma's or granny's favorite dishcloth pattern. This pattern is everywhere. There are so many renditions of this pattern. It's a free download on Ravelry. Um, I know that the yarn hoarder is doing a um, knit along right now for the dishcloth. Like you can knit all the dishcloths and I didn't actually know about that when I started knitting these. Um, I'm thinking about heading over and checking it out on Ravelry, but there's lots of people knitting this particular pattern. And that's because when it comes to dishcloths or washcloths, this pattern is amazing. It's simple to knit, um, super easy. You memorize the pattern. You don't need a paper pattern. You really don't even need to keep track of rows all that much. You just make it as big or as small as you want it. Um, it's the best and they work really, really well. I knit a whole stack of these for my first son um, before he was born and we're still using them now and we don't even just use them for him. We use them for everything around the house. They are sturdy. They hold up to washing and drying in the washing machine. I don't block them. I just wash them. Um, it's just, it's great. It's, it's just what it should be, right? It's made from, um, this is actually, I'm knitting this with the Walmart brand, peaches and cream cotton yarn. It's kind of like the knockoff version of the Lily, um, yarn. I, I think it's called, is it called peaches and cream? The Walmart version? I don't know. It's, it's the Walmart version. It's $1.50 a ball. I was at Walmart the other day and I grabbed a bunch cause I knew I wanted to knit some of these. So I am working on these. I have not knit one every single day. In fact, I've only knit two completely. Um, and then I'm working on this one right now. So I'm trying to knit a collection of two washcloths per color that I have. So I have this color here, which is very close to the baby blanket color. <laughs> But um, I have this color here. I am knitting two per color. So I've got these two done. And then I'm going to do two in the red color. And then I have a bunch of other really cute colors that I'm working on. So these are just something simple on my needles right now. Some domestic knitting, if you will, um, for future baby Earl coming soon. And I like knitting things like this. I kind of like the simplicity, the traditional nature of a little bit of a domestic knit, um, something that's going to be functional. It just It's refreshing. Um, and also it's heartwarming because it's for a little baby. It's the way I feel about the blanket as well. So that's what's going on in this. I showed this earlier as living in my school stories project bag that was gifted to be my that was gifted to me by Marilitza when she sent the um, spool stories bag that's going out for the giveaway prize. And I love this bag, you guys. I can't speak highly enough about this bag. I go in detail about how much I love this bag in the previous episode, but it really is a fantastic project bag. But those are my granny's favorite dishcloths. Okay, the next project was actually resurrected. I stopped working on this. Well, okay, I started working on this in August because I remember casting on to this sock at the airport when we were getting ready to board the plane to Washington. We went to Washington for a week and then we went to Alaska for a week. And this was one of the projects that I took with me there. This, this is one sock of a pair of Hermione's Everyday Socks, which is a really popular sock pattern by Erica Luter, if you haven't heard of it. 
Um, I decided that I wanted to cast it on because Joy from the Anxious Knitter podcast back in the summer was talking about how fun it is to knit. Um, and the way that she described it was made it sound very tempting. And she was absolutely correct. It is a really fun sock to knit. But I remember putting it down. Um, I was in that first trimester of pregnancy and a lot of things that I really, really enjoyed just I didn't enjoy so much. It was that time where you're nauseous and you're anxious and it just was a hot mess and so I remember putting this down um, thinking that I really didn't want to uh, work on that right now I actually didn't do a lot of knitting in that first little bit of time and so I decided I was going to resurrect these socks because number one they're beautiful the pattern is so much fun to knit and I really would like to have them off the needles because I'm really wanting to add more hand knit socks to my um my collection so here is what I have of my first sock of the Hermione's everyday socks. I am knitting these in Fiber for the People yarn. This is the peach pit colorway right here and I'm knitting it on the gilded base which is a gold Stellina infused two-ply yarn base. So it's 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 5% gold Stellina. And then this is also Fiber for the People yarn in the Moving On Up colorway. It's a beautiful um, rich mauve colorway so that's going to be my contrast. I, the one thing about these socks that I would definitely do differently in the future is I would do a two by two rib instead of a one by one rib. I'm really not a fan of a one by one ribbed cuff. I find that a one by one rib tends to look a little bit sloppy um, and that could just be me or, but I don't know. I just feel like the two, you know, columns of a knit and a garter bump rib, it just, it's too, they're, they're, they're too packed in there. I feel like there needs to be more separation and I think that a two by two lends that like neatness to the ribbing. I don't know. So maybe you know what I mean. Maybe you feel the same way. I do know a lot of us have like a preference on what style of rib cuffed we cuff we use, but I just tend to feel like a two by two is a little bit neater. So, and it's fine. I think it looks beautiful. Um, but I know next time if I knit a pair of these, I would do a two by two instead of a one by one uh, ribbed cuff here. But I love the stitch pattern. It's kind of a really pretty play on an Eye of Partridge, in my opinion. I have no idea if that was the intention, but when I see it up against the Eye of Partridge or the modified Eye of Partridge heel flap here, I kind of feel like that's maybe what was inspired or in, what inspired the stitch pattern. But this is a beautiful heel flap. I love the little edge of garter stitch over here on either side of the Eye of Partridge. It adds that little feature that's different. You don't see that very often. So yeah, I'm really loving these. I actually, I went from having probably only to like where my fingers are right now uh, the other day to having all the way down to the heel flap. So I feel pretty good about that. But I love these socks. So if you haven't tried the Hermione's Everyday Sock, definitely give it a shot. If, if it's your first textured sock pattern, then that would probably be a great one uh, for that because it is pretty simple. The pattern's super easy to memorize and it's super easy in general, just lots of knits and pearls, more knits than pearls it feels like, so that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, definitely recommend these. These, oh, and here, I'll show you the yarn in the cake. So this is um, Peach Pit and this is in the cake. But whenever I show Peach Pit on the podcast, it always gets blown out by the lights. It's definitely much more orange, uh, well, peachy colored than what you're seeing here. This almost looks yellow and it's got those speckles of um, that berry kind of color in there which resembles the center of a peach. Um, it's beautiful. It's one of my favorite fiber for the people colorways and on the gilded base with the gold Stellina it's exceptional. And then the moving on up colorway is what I'm currently using so it's attached. This is it right here. So really beautiful rich mauve color. So I love that. And these are living in a little pouch that I picked up at Joanne Fabrics while I was, no, actually, yeah, no, I picked this up at Joanne Fabrics while I was waiting in line. Um, they had these at the checkout, kind of like when you're walking through uh, the line to get to the checkout, they put all the goodies there. This was one of them. And I love this bag. I love the little, it's not really Aztec, I guess, but I love the diamond pattern. Really cool. Joann's usually has these kinds of pouches um, in that section of the shop and they make the best project bags. So that's what I'm using for my Hermione's everyday socks. My last whip of the day that I'm going to share with you guys is another pair of socks. This is just a pair of vanilla socks. 
But what I'm excited about is the colorway here. This is actually being knit on Fiber for the People yarn. Um, both the the heel, I didn't do the cuff with this, but both the heel and the rest of the sock are knit with Fiber for the People yarn. The body of the sock is knit with Lights Through the Trees, which is a colorway that is going to be in the upcoming shop update as a sock set. Uh, the set is not going to be the same as what you see here. The base color or the main color is going to be Lights Through the Trees. The accompanying mini fiber that I'm putting with that is a little more punchy than the one that I'm using here. I just had this one in my stash and I really wanted to use it and I thought that the subtle contrast would be pretty so that's why I went with it here. But the fiber for the people shop update is going to have lights the trees with a much punchier um, mini fiber for contrasting heels, cuffs, and toes. But without further ado, here is my lights through the trees vanilla sock. I am obsessed with this colorway in this sock. Now, what I love so much about this, and somebody touched on it on Instagram when they saw the photo, is that the striping and the pulling of the colors in this variegated colorway is really, really very interesting looking. Like, I mean, you're getting these little black stripes that are happening here, but they're happening at this diagonal, like, bias angle right here and then it's you know you have the red coming through and then you have the red at that same angle right here and then there's some really slight striping going on it's just really exciting and fun to knit because it's interesting every time you do a new row it just kind of adds a new dynamic to the fabric i'm really excited about this colorway you know it was gonna be a seasonal colorway for around the christmas time but I don't see why it should be. I'm going to bring this into regular circulation in the upcoming year. So you will see this in the shop updates just because it's so beautiful. I love it too because it's not overtly feminine. It's definitely a sock that you can knit for a man or somebody who wants something a little bit more masculine. It's just a really great all around color and it serves a, as a really great neutral as well. I mean, you have multiple colors going on in here. Um, but it, it almost together cumulatively could work as a neutral. So you could almost pair any kind of, you know, contrasting heels, cuff or toe with this and it would be really beautiful. I'm actually using a Lucky Strike from a, quite a few updates ago. This was a Fiber for the People Lucky Strike called Espresso Roast. I kept a skein of it in my stash because I was obsessed with it. Um, it's the perfect kind of neutral brown, like nutty color. This is also dyed up on the gilded base, which is that 7525 with gold Stellina. Um, I'm using the slip stitch rib heel like I typically do, and I just love it. Now, good news about this colorway is that I do think I could recreate this. I'm pretty sure I know how to recreate this, so I'm going to be giving that a shot for future... I'm thinking probably I'm going to try and get this colorway as a, an actual recurring colorway starting the first update of February so you can look for it there if that's something that you're interested in. It's really it's really a beautiful and neutral and I love the way it kind of works with the lights through the trees as a subtle contrast. Yeah I'm really digging it. So that's what I have going on here. Just my basic vanilla sock. My vanilla socks, I kind of came up with the formula. Well, I didn't come up with the formula, but I use the formula that's laid out by Kate Atherley in her Knitting 101, or, or excuse me, Socks 101 article from Knitty.com. I will link to it down below in the show notes if you're interested, but she just kind of gives you a basic layout for a vanilla sock formula based on your leg and foot measurements that you can kind of adjust. You can add a pattern to it. You can do what you will with it. It just makes it really simple um, and it can be adjusted to any size foot. So if you're knitting socks for somebody else, you can use that same formula just using the measurements of that person's foot and leg or, or the average, you know, foot and leg measurements what have you. So that's kind of what I'm using here. But typically what it is, is a two by two ribbed cuff, 20 rows of the ribbing, and then I do a seven inch leg, um, all same size needle, I just stick to the same size needle, a seven inch leg, I prefer a heel flapping gusset, only because I haven't really explored many different heel designs. I've done a fish lips kiss heel and that's okay. I just prefer the way a heel flapping gusset looks and I really prefer a slip stitch rib heel um, as opposed to a stockinette heel. I like an eye of partridge heel as well. I think those are a lot of fun but my go-to is the slip stitch um, rib heel. I just I really think that that's kind of my favorite. 
So that's what's going on there. And then my foot, I knit my foot all the way until it's about two inches from the tip of my toes. And then I do a rounded toe at the end with a Kitchener closure. And that's my, that's my sock recipe for a vanilla sock. It's pretty basic. It's my go-to. And I'm knitting this on size one Haya Haya Sharps. When it comes to knitting socks on fingering weight yarn, Haya Haya Sharps are definitely my go-to. My Hermione's Everyday Socks I'm knitting on a size one Chiaogu. And I love Chiaogu's as well. Um, but the Haya Haya's, they've just got my number when it comes to sock knitting. But I go back and forth. Actually, I think if you were to chronicle back to previous episodes of the podcast, that maybe has changed even in the short amount of time that I've been doing the podcast. But I don't know, right now my heart is with these high high sharps. They're my favorite. So that is my Lights Through the Trees vanilla sock. And I'm super excited about this colorway. Um, And I know you guys are gonna love it as well. So if you're interested in that colorway, it is gonna be in the shop update um, on Tuesday and I'll talk more about that later. But that's what I have right now for my works in progress that have actually been actively in progress since the last time that we spoke. Um, I have other things that I have other things I'd like to cast on, but I'm trying to be really good and get things off my needles before casting on new things. I have plans for a pair of scrappy socks because I keep seeing the scrappy socks on Instagram and they're adorable. Um, so I have plans for something like that. I do have some more domestic knitting that I'd like to do. I have some dishcloths, um, uh, not washcloths, dish towels, I guess I should say, that I really am interested in getting knit. Um, Just lots of good stuff. I mean, there's so many fun things to knit, so that's that. But right now I'm gonna try and focus on getting these things finished, so. So that's what I've got for works in progress. Sorry, I just had a little visitor jump into my basket of yarn over here. So this, I'm gonna take a moment and introduce you if you haven't met yet. This is Oscar. Um, Oscar is the house cat that I talk about and that is very rarely ever seen on the show. So I'm really excited to introduce him to you here. So, hey, Oscar, can you say? Okay, yeah, see, look, he's very shy. Oh, he's very lovable, but he's very shy. But this is him. He um, is usually always just over there behind the camera sleeping when I podcast, but he doesn't ever usually make an appearance. So I thought maybe I would introduce him to you here. So this is Oscar. All right, you guys, I am super excited to share with you what's coming to the shop on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's January 30th. Lots of really fun things coming to the shop. Some new things are coming to the shop. I have three different sock sets coming to the shop. I just, you know what? There's so many great things coming. Plus, I have a collaboration that I'm going to be doing with Chelsea at Darn Yarn MN that I want to share with you guys. Those kits are not going to be available in the Tuesday shop update, but they are going to be available in the shop the following Friday. The reason why I push that out a little bit is because I want to make sure that both Chelsea and I have all of the things that we need to add them to our shops at the same time. And right now I needed a little bit more time to finish up my end, get them sent to Chelsea so that she can add them to her shop and we can release them at the exact same time. So that's why you won't be seeing them in the shop on Tuesday. They will be in the shop on Friday. So I'm really excited to share these kits with you guys. I've only done a couple of sneak peeks at what's going to be going on on Instagram. So you can see that over there, but I am going to show you a little bit more today. Plus I have have some really great mini fiber bundles that I want to share with you guys. I curated little collections of mini fiber bundles from one of a kind Lucky Strike colorways, a few other one of a kind colorways so that you guys can have a little bundle of minis for doing scrappy socks, for whatever it is that you want to use those minis for, but they're adorable and so I'm super excited to share that with you guys. In the meantime, before I forget though, do not forget to head over to the website, which is fiberforthepeopleyarn.com. Sign up for the newsletter so that you can be in tune and in the loop of what's coming to the shop. Definitely, even though I'm telling you about the shop update now, sign up for the newsletter anyway, because I do send out promotional offers for newsletter subscribers only. And so it's just another place where you can get a deal when you come to the shop. And plus it's always good to see what's going to be in the shop ahead of time. And then you know exactly what you're looking for when you come. All right, so let's go ahead and get on with the yarny goodness that's coming to the shop for the Fiber for the People shop update on Tuesday. I'm really, really excited about this update because there are some new things that I'm featuring that I haven't featured before. And some of those things are what I like to call mini fiber bundles. I have curated some little collections of mini fibers, which are the little mini skeins on in various different colorways. Some of the colorways are colorways that have been in the shop before and some of them are lucky strike colorways from my dye sessions for this last shop
pop update. But all of the little bundles are kind of curated to have a particular color theme and they're just, they're adorable. I love them so much. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you which ones I have now. When you receive these, if you purchase a mini fiber bundle, the individual mini skeins will not be labeled. It will be given with a information card or an ID card so that you know what each mini fiber is content wise, fiber content wise, and also what color, uh, what color way it is worked up on. Like I said, some of these are one of a kind, but all of the kind of collections are going to be given their own um, collection name. So when you go to purchase them, you'll see that it's mini fiber bundle and it'll have a name that names the entire collection, but each individual skein will be listed on the information card that comes with your purchase. So here we go for the mini fiber bundles that are coming to the shop. So this is our first mini fiber bundle. So here they are. They're so cute. I'm just going to show a couple. This one's kind of floppy because the skein over here is a, a silk blend so it has a really nice drape to it but here are the little bundles they're so cute there's going to be three little mini fiber collections coming to the shop and i love them so much so here is i'll call this the first one so it's just a really fun kind of feminine really appropriate for the season for valentine's day collection perfect for a really nice muted pair of scrappy socks or whatever you would like to use these for um, but it's just a little collection of minis lots this is a lucky strike color here this is the dust bunny colorway this is a lucky strike colorway here beautiful browns and peaches and some teal and then this is the miss harker colorway here beautiful speckled pretty little thing. That is one of the collections that will be offered in the shop across various different bases. They're not all going to be the same base. This is a Taylor's favorite, Taylor's favorite. Um, this is the workhorse base and the workhorse base. So you're going to have various different bases in your bundle. Um, each bundle, so each of these bundles in this collection will have the same bases in them, but the different collections will have different bases. So that's one bundle there. We have this bundle here and this is going to be attic treasure miss harker this is a lavender latte lucky strike and then this is a lucky strike as well which has not been named yet and this is taylor's favorite taylor's favorite taylor's favorite and this is a workhorse so again various different yarn bases going into that so that is this collection here and then Last but not least, this is my favorite of the three collections. Um, there's just something about this color combination that I love so much. So <clears throat> here we have the next one. Again, Miss Harker is making an appearance in each collection. So here's Miss Harker. This is another Lucky Strike colorway that is unnamed. And this is on my new Whist base, which is 100% untreated uh, merino yarn in a two-ply twist. This is One Can Become Too Familiar with Vegetables, and this is on the Taylor's Favorite Base. And this is a Lucky Strike colorway, which I haven't named yet, but it is on my new Twisty Singles Luxe Base, which is a 70% superwash merino, 30% silk single-ply base. And I love these colors together so much. It's got such a, a woodsy feel to it, an earthy vibe. I really, really love it. So those are the three mini fiber bundle collections that will be in the shop on Tuesday. So here they are. This one just wants to like flop all over. That's a testament to how drapey that particular yarn is. It's absolutely gorgeous, but I'm loving these. Okay, so the individual little mini skeins that you can find in those collections, I'm just gonna give you a little look at each one individually. So this collection features a little Lucky Strike mini. This is um, a Lucky Strike colorway. That is a one of a kind colorway. I talk a little bit about how I get my Lucky Strike colorways on the blog on the fiberforthepeopleyarn.com website. This is on the new Twisty Singles Lux base. It is a gorgeous single ply base, um, just like my Twisty Singles base that I typically carry in the shop, except it has 30% silk. And oh gosh, it is absolutely gorgeous. It has an amazing drape. You can see just the way it's hanging here. It has a gorgeous drape. Love the tonal color, the colorway going on here with the greens, deeper and darker greens. 
really beautiful color. Um, this yarn is amazing because it's got a really nice tight twist, which lends to durability. Plus it has the silk, which also helps when it comes to keeping it from pilling and making it really nice and strong. So this is a twisty singles base, or excuse me, this is a single ply base that you could use across any project that you're working on. It's suitable for anything. So if you wanted to use this for heels, cuffs and toes, it would work beautifully for that. So that is going to be in this mini fiber collection. And then in addition to that, there is going to be a little mini skein of one can become too familiar with vegetables. Really, really pretty little delicately speckled yarn. It's got some neon yellows, some chartreuse greens in there, some really pretty deep steely blue speckles, some red pink speckles happening through there. So that's really pretty. It also will be coming with this skein. It's kind of almost like a russet color. I almost want to say like if you were to mix like terracotta and mauve together, this might be what you get. Really beautiful. This is on my new whist base, which is unsuper non-superwash, 100% um, non-superwash merino wool. It is a two-ply yarn, so it has a really beautiful twist to it, but it is a non-superwash option. So that's beautiful. And then also... Miss Harker. You can find Miss Harker in each of the collections. So this is a skein that will be featured in each of the collections. It's a little washed out with the lights. There's peach running through here. Lots of beautiful speckles. I'll get it in there so you can see a really delicate colorway here. And that will be in each of the different collections. In addition to those, you have this collection right here. And I'm gonna show you what we have in this collection here. So this one is that Miss Harker that I just showed you. And then we have this beautiful stripey, lucky strike that's got nice chocolate browns with some peachy pinks. And then there's various different speckles of teal kind of throughout. Um, <clears throat> this particular skein right here, those teal speckles are kind of hiding. Um, but there are some teal speckles kind of going throughout the skein. It's so gorgeous. I love this so much. So that will be in there. And then also, this is called Attic Treasure. Beautiful deep purples, mauves, some browns and golds throughout there that will be in one of the collections as well. And then we'll also have this pink mauve color. There's lots of mauve kind of undertones to these pinker colors. Um, that's just because the Lucky Strikes that I was doing this time around kind of carried that undertone, I suppose. So this will also be, it's coming out more of just a true pink on camera. It's got a little warmer tone to it in reality. So this will also be in the collection. And then I forgot to grab a single skein of the Lavender Latte, but here is Lavender Latte right here. It's a beautiful, very pale lavender color. I actually had Lavender Latte as a lucky strike in my previous update, and this colorway here ended up coming out just like that one, so I'm just calling it Lavender Latte because it's so stinking close that I feel like it's not worth coming up with a whole new colorway because it does look just so similar to that. So these little minis are little Lavender Latte minis. So those are the minis that are going to be in the little mini collection. To see a little bit more about this, you can check out Instagram and then also keep track um, on the shop for the listings that pop up on the Tuesday shop update, but definitely sign up for the newsletter so you can get a little bit more information about what's going to be in that shop um, in regards to these little mini collections. As I mentioned, I am going to be doing a kit collaboration with Chelsea from Darn Yarn MN. So I wanna show you guys a little bit of what's coming in those kits. So I have here a sample of the project bag that Chelsea created for these kits and it is gorgeous. So it's the same style of project bag like the one I was using for my uh, Light to the Trees sock. It's that peekaboo project bag with the window so you can see your work. Her label is right here. The handle, it's gorgeous, and the zipper. Everything is just so beautifully constructed. These are up there when it comes to my favorite project bags. They're just excellent project bags. Perfect go-to, easy to grab, easy to put into a larger bag. I just love everything about this. So this was the fabric that she chose for this, and then I dyed up a skein of yarn to kind of go with the fabric to kind of bring that same vibe to the yarn. Now, if you know anything about me when I dye yarn, I like I to add little punchy contrasts. 
whether that be in the form of black speckles or some other kind of punchy color. And I definitely took the risk here and I'm really, really happy that I did. I think this came out beautifully. And not only am I going to be offering this skein with the project bag that Chelsea created in the kit, I'm going to make this a sock set. So you're going to get the project bag by Chelsea at Darn Yarn MN in addition to a sock set of Fiber for the People yarn. But this is the main color that will be going with the kit. I do not have a name for this yet. I'm actually in the process of working on a name for the kit collection or collaboration, but this is the color that's going to be going into the kit. So here is the project bag and the yarn together. And it's really, really very beautiful. I'm super excited about it. I love the speckles in this yarn. I love the charcoal color. Definitely a really interesting contrast. The blues, bring out the blues and the fabric that you can see. And then there's the subtle yellows. It's just such a pretty combination. And because this is going to be a sock set, I do have the yarn that I'm going to be pairing with this skein for the contrasting heels, cuffs, and toes. I have chosen to make the mini that I'm putting with this skein. This is on my Taylor's favorite base. So this is a two ply, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon um, base. I'm going to be pairing my workhorse base with this. Now my workhorse base is actually a new uh, fiber content. Previously it was merino, nylon combination. It was a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. I have since changed that um, because of testing and preference. And also because I wanted to carry a uh, blue face luster yarn uh, wool in my shop. And so I have changed my workhorse base to be a 7525 four ply fingering weight yarn, except the wool content is actually BFL and not Merino. And I'm really happy I made that choice. BFL wool is a really nice, beautiful, soft wool base, but it is more sturdy and rugged and it's perfect for um, kind of that like sturdy, hardy sock base. So the yarn that's going to be included in these sock sets for the contrasting heels, cuffs and toes is actually going to be workhorse. So the main body of the sock is going to be knit on the 8022 ply twist, Taylor's favorite. Your contrasting mini skein is going to be on the workhorse base. So you get a little bit of a combination of two bases. I really like to combine bases when I'm doing heels, cuffs and toes. I have no qualms with that and I actually kind of like the way it works out. So that's how these sock sets are going to come out. Um, let me go ahead and show you though the contrasting color. I haven't worked it up into minis. I'm getting there. I'm in the process but I do have the color here to show you. So I'm going to wind this into a loose hank so that I can show it to you up against the actual skein. Okay so this is just a twisted ball of this. So we have the main color right here and then get ready for it because it's super punchy folks. We have the contrasting heels, cuffs and toes colorway right here. So this will be paired into a sock set to go with the <clears throat> Darn Yarn MN project bag. And you guys, I'm so excited about this. It's really so beautiful. I... <laughs> When springtime comes around, and I know it's not quite spring yet, but when it starts kind of getting to that season, I start getting really excited about punchy colors. Um, that's just kind of where my mind's at when it comes to the season. And so I wanted to do something punchy, and I was really excited when I saw the fabric because it really lent me that opportunity with this beautiful blue um, and the combination of the speckly colorway that I created here. So I'm super excited about that. So this will be a sock set, and it will be combined into a kit with Chelsea's project bag here. And these kits will be available on Friday. So the shop update is Tuesday these kits will be available on Friday. I wanted to make sure that she and I both received everything we need to put the kits together at the same time. My shop update is coming Tuesday and I'm not gonna be able to get the yarn to her by that time. So we set it for Friday just to make sure that we could release these at the same time. They will be a very limited um, quantity in the shop. So keep that in mind, but it's, gosh, I, I want one so bad myself. 
and they are they are going to be pretty limited. So we definitely want to work fast with this, but I'm super excited about these kits. Keep an eye out on Instagram for more photos of these as they become complete. I'm going to be winding up the minis for the sock sets today and getting these kits all finalized and taking some really pretty photos to put up on Instagram and to put into a newsletter. I'm going to be sending a newsletter out to talk about the shop update for Tuesday, but I'm going to send out an additional newsletter after that to talk about the kits that are going to be released into the shop the following Friday. So definitely sign up for the newsletter, but I'm super, super excited about that. Again, these are not named yet. If you have any suggestions, shoot them my way. I love to hear the ideas that you guys come up with for yarn names, but I will be naming this, getting it finished and put together and taking some really great photos and posting them up on Instagram. So keep a lookout for that. Okay, another returning colorway coming to the shop is one of my all time favorites. And those of you that are fans of Outlander, you will be familiar with this reference. But this colorway is called Craig Nadoon. It is a beautiful variegated colorway with greens and tobaccos and grays. And I love it so much. I'm going to be offering this on four bases. And I really have something um, important that I want to share with you guys, considering the fact that I do offer non super wash yarns in the shop now. So I have something I'd like to share with you about that. Plus, I also want to introduce the new twisty singles Lux base that will be offered in the shop as a semi regular yarn base. So I'm going to go ahead and show you first Craig Nadoon on the 8020 Taylor's favorite base. So here it is. I love it so much. It really is such a bright, beautiful, I guess you could say spring color, but it really is not a seasonal color. It's just a great classic everyday color. It's got the deep emerald greens running throughout, the beautiful tobacco mixed with this gray stone color that's kind of a nod to the Craig Nadoon standing stones from Outlander. Occasionally you'll see some gray speckles in there. Um, those are just consequential. It's not meant to be a speckled colorway, but I love it when they pop up from time to time. So this is Craig Nadoon and it is on here. It is on my Taylor's favorite 8020 two ply yarn, which is like I said, my favorite. I love it so much. So this is Craig Nadoon on Taylor's favorite. It will also be available on the new workhorse base, which like I mentioned is still a 7525, still a four ply, still a sock weight yarn, but now instead of merino wool, it is BFL blue face luster uh, wool. And I'm super excited to offer both Polworth and BFL in the shop because I like mixing up the breeds and offering a little bit more than merino. Um, and so that's gonna be in the workhorse and you guys are going to love this yarn, trust me. It is definitely a workhorse yarn. It is nice and hardy and perfect for those hard wearing socks. You're gonna love it. So here is Craig Nadoon on the workhorse, which is the 7525 base. Oh, it's so beautiful. I always love, especially when I'm looking at this on the camera, I love looking at the way the different yarn bases take the dye. Because when you have different yarn bases and fiber content, it's definitely gonna take up the dye differently. There's more nylon in this particular uh, yarn and it's made of a different wool. And so it always will take up the dye just a little differently than perhaps the 8020 will. So it's kind of an interesting combination. And that actually becomes really apparent in just a moment when I share with you the Craig Nadoon on the O Merino yarn base. So I did do some worsted weight variegated colors for this shop update. So this is Craig Nadoon on the O Merino 100% untreated non superwash um, merino yarn. And it's really, really interesting to see kind of how the variegation and how the dye is taken up on a non superwash yarn. So this is the same colorway dyed with the exact same technique using the same colors. Everything is the same, but this is an untreated yarn. And so you're going to notice that the colorway comes up just a little bit differently on the yarn. So here it is on my 8020 and here it is on my non superwash dye is taken up by non superwash yarn far less intensely than it's taken up by superwash yarn. And there's, you know, science behind that. And the reason why that happens is because non superwash yarn has not been scoured. It's not been treated with any kind of a plasticine coating, um, which prevents superwash yarn from pilling. That's just the process that it undergoes to become superwash. That's not done to untreated yarn. And so this yarn still has, it still retains the cuticle and the scale on the fiber. And that can actually make the, the fiber less porous and susceptible to um, soaking in and all that dye is and, and having the dye strike as fast in each of the different spots. It's almost like as soon as the dye hits the yarn, 
it spreads a little bit over the surface of the fiber before striking. And so you don't get that solid, sharp variegation that you would with a variegated yarn on a superwash or a variegated dye job on a superwash yarn. Same thing goes with speckles. It's really, really difficult to speckle a non superwash yarn because the speckles just don't strike fast enough and set sharp enough to really look like speckles. They almost just kind of look like watercolor details. Um, that's kind of the best way I could describe that. Um, so yeah, this just, it looks a little bit different, but that's just the nature of the fiber content. That's what happens when you get a variegated color on a non super wash yarn. And, and then I'm also offering Craig Nadoon on the all new Twisty Singles Luxe Base, which is a 70% super wash merino, 30% silk, luxury single ply base, beautiful for any garment you really would want to use this for. It's strong enough for socks. It's not going to pill because it's a super tight twist. It's got the silk content so that it lends a little bit of durability as well. Perfect for shawls because you guys, the drape of this yarn is just phenomenal. So here it is. This is the twisty singles luxe base anytime you increase the silk content in a yarn you're definitely going to notice that it takes up the dye less intensely in a very similar way um, to a non superwash yarn the only difference is is that you can speckle um, a silk you know a yarn with a silk content like this um, pretty easily it still takes up speckles nicely and they tend to be pretty sharp but everything just looks a little bit more muted a little bit more subtle and also too because you have such a luster and a sheen to the yarn it reflects light makes it almost look as if it's not as intense even though it may be but it's beautiful I love it so much you can see the sheen of the yarn here oh you guys it's gorgeous and like I showed you with the mini like it drapes like nobody's business. You can see the way it kind of, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so this is the new Twisty Singles Lux, and this is the Craig Nadoon colorway. These will be in the shop on Tuesday, and I'm super excited about it. It's one of my favorite colorways. Um, it's, it's, it's one of those colorways that's beautiful in the skein, beautiful when you cake it up, and then as soon as you turn it into a knit fabric, it's just, it's even more beautiful. It just gets better and better all the time when you use it, so you're gonna love that. Also on that Twisty Singles Lux base, I'm going to be offering um, patina. So I made a few skeins of patina and I dyed it up on the Twisty Singles Lux because I wanted to see how it came out. And you guys, it is so beautiful. I love it so much. It's a little bit more subtle um, on the Twisty Singles for the reasons I mentioned before, but oh, it is so beautiful. This is definitely going to be a colorway that I bring to the shop frequently because I'm just obsessed with it. So this is that Twisty Singles Lux, 70% Superwash Merino, 30% silk single ply yarn and this is the patina colorway this was in the last full shop update I had oh you guys it is so beautiful um, again the lights will kind of brighten it up a little bit here but oh it's lovely definitely keep your eyes out on Instagram and in the shop update um, for pictures of this you can see a little bit more of an accurate depiction because of the silk the light is really gonna reflect off of it and it's gonna wash it out a little bit but hopefully you can get an idea of what's going on here with the beautiful peaches and the teal speckles and the charcoal speckles I mean you guys oh my gosh it's beautiful and this yarn I want to knit a pillow out of it and then sleep on it Oh, it's so lovely. I would knit a pair of pajamas out of this. Wait, I would buy the yarn and then I would have somebody knit me a pair of pajamas. It's so beautiful. I love it so much. So there will be a very, very limited supply of this colorway in the shop on Tuesday, oh, but it is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And that is on the Twisty Singles Lux base. I am so glad to announce that Cactus Flower is going to be back in the shop. It was in the previous shop update and I'm putting it into this shop update because you guys, this colorway is so popular and I love that you love it so much because it is my probably my all time favorite. One of the originals and it's beautiful. So Cactus Flower will be in the shop. I will have it on the Taylor's Favorite, which is an 80-20 uh, two ply twist. So here's Cactus Flower on Taylor's Favorite. It will also be available on the workhorse base, which is the 7525, which is down here. 75% superwash BFL, 25% nylon. And then it is also going to be on the Omerino worsted base. And just like with the Craig Nadoon um, Omerino version, this is a non superwash yarn. So you're going to notice that the dye job is a little less intense than it is on the superwash yarn. So here it is on the Omerino base. This is the worsted base here. It's beautiful, but granted, it is definitely less intense 
than the superwash base as you can see here. So this is Taylor's favorite 8020 and that is the worsted weight base. But you guys, regardless, it's really very beautiful. So I love that. And then last but not least, I am going to be offering it on the Twisty Singles Luxe base and you guys just get a load of this. Oh, get in there. Oh my goodness, so pretty. Those sage greens, oh, I love it, and the pinks. It's a very warm colorway. Sometimes when I dye up this colorway, I find that it tends to be more sage green, and then sometimes I dye it and it tends to be a little warmer, um, which I love that aspect of, of this craft. I love the, the changes that sometimes happen when you're doing something like this that is so creative, you know, that even if you're following a recipe, there's always going to be nuances that come out more in some versions than in others. And I love this about that. So these are the skeins that we are going to have along the bases in the shop for cactus flower in Tuesday's update. So I'm super, super excited about that. So I have a new colorway coming to the shop and this was actually um, kind of an experimental colorway. I was trying to do one thing and then something else happened and it wasn't quite what I wanted. So I went back and I added some more, you know, some more to the yarn and I came up with something actually really, really cool. So I'm excited to share this with you. I'm calling this low fidelity because the term low fidelity refers to a sound wave that's created from a kind of an audio mishap, I guess you could say. It's like distortions in sound, but that actually contribute to something that's really cool and can be used in music. So that's where you get the term low fidelity. Um, but that's what I'm calling this. And I really, really love it. So I'm offering low fidelity in the shop as single skeins and as sock sets. So you will see um, a DK weight sock set and a fingering weight sock set with this colorway. And then so the first I'm going to show you is the Taylor's favorite. This is the 8020. Superwash Merino Nylon Two Ply Twist. Here's the yarn in all of its glory. You guys look at that, isn't that like crazy? I love it so much. It's like chaos in a yarn and it's beautiful. Oh, I can't, I just, oh, I want to cake it up and look at it in the cake and then I want to knit with it and I want to look at it in the fabric because it's going to be so beautiful. So I cannot wait to see that worked up. Um, into something because it's so fun to look at. So this is low fidelity. And then I'm going to be offering it as a sock set on the other three bases. But now I'm gonna show you my whist base, which is a non superwash yarn. And you're gonna see that there is definitely a difference in saturation and intensity when it comes to the dye job on this particular skein of yarn. So whist is a fingering weight, two ply twist, 100% non superwash merino. It's beautiful. It has an amazing hand. It's a nice sturdy yarn, but it definitely takes up the dye differently. So here it is. This is the low fidelity colorway and you can see it comes out almost more like a watercolor as opposed to a really sharp variegated colorway. So here it is on Taylor's favorite and then here it is on the non superwash whist. And it's beautiful, but it's so interesting how that works when you dye it exactly the same way. The techniques are all the same, but it just comes out differently like that. So kind of an interesting dynamic, like I mentioned. So this will also be in a sock set. Now I have dyed up um, a beautiful skein of yarn to go with this in a mini form in a really pretty pale orange color to kind of go with the warmer tones. And that's going to accompany this skein. I don't have that here to show you yet because right now it is drying, but keep an eye out on Instagram. So you, and on the newsletter as well, so you can kind of see what that's going to look like. And then I'm also going to offer it as sock sets on the workhorse base, which is here. So here is Low Fidelity on Workhorse. Really beautiful. And then also I'm going to offer it on the Lofty DK base. And then for the sock sets, I'm going to be including a mini fiber in this really beautiful orange color here. It's going to be really punchy, really fun, really different. So that will be what your sock set will look like. You'll have a corresponding mini fiber in this really punchy bright orange color with the low fidelity uh, 
colorway right here. So I'm really excited about that. It's going to be beautiful. So you will have a sock set with this color combination in the DK weight and two fingering weight bases as well. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So that will be in the shop on Tuesday. That's low fidelity and it will be a sock set. Okay, I will also be offering sock sets of Lights Through the Trees, like I mentioned earlier, and I'm super excited to share this with you guys. Lights Through the Trees will be across three different bases. I will have it on my Taylor's Favor 8020, Workhorse 7525, and Lofty DK, which is 100% Superwash Merino, four-ply DK weight yarn. Sock sets will be across all three of those. So I wanna show you guys, um, first the Lights Through the Trees colorway, and then I wanna show you the accompanying mini fiber that's gonna go with that, because it is so, fun and punchy and exciting. I love it. So here is Lights Through the Trees. And this is on the DK weight base. This is 100% Superwash Merino, four ply DK weight. This is the worsted, or excuse me, this is the workhorse base right here. This is 75% BFL, 25% nylon. And then we have Taylor's favorite. 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, two ply twist. These are the three bases that you will be able to get your um, sock sets on in the shop update. And now I'm gonna show you the mini fiber that's gonna go along with that. And I'm just gonna hold up one skein of yarn and the mini fiber to go along with it. I don't know what it is. Like I was just really into the idea of a really punchy, um, corresponding contrasting heels cuffs and toes for this colorway so here it is so you have your lights to the trees and it will be um and it will be combined with this really beautiful kind of i would say emerald green but it's really not it's actually kind of more of like a teal green I don't know, it's just, it's really beautiful. It's got blue undertones to it more so than the warm undertones of an emerald green. Um, I don't know, but maybe it is more like a true emerald, but it is beautiful in correspondence with this colorway. I love it so much. So that will be what to look forward to in the sock sets for the lights of the trees. This is the DK weight base here. This is the Taylor's favorite. Oh my gosh, look how much fun that is, you guys. So pretty. Oh, I love it so much. And then this is the um, workhorse base right there. So that is what's going to make up your Lights Through the Tree sock sets. And I love it so much. So the th all three of these contrasting colors together. I mean, look at this. It's like an episode of Sesame Street. I love it so much. Um, they look so loud and like vibrant. But I think when you're making socks... It's a lot of fun to have really punchy colors like this. And I know that my um, current socks that I'm working on right now are really not a huge indicator of that, but I really do love, you know, when the weather starts to, starts to warm up and you're knitting projects still, it's almost kind of fun to incorporate more color into your work. Um, I don't know, that's just personal opinion, but I love the colors of the mini fiber for the contrasting heels, cuffs and toes this update. I'm just so obsessed with all of the different sock sets that are gonna be in the shop. So, so I hope you guys are as well. So definitely Definitely make sure you're there on Tuesday to grab not only your mini bundles, but also your sock sets and anything else that strikes your fancy. But those are the star players in the shop update for Tuesday. I do have two um, lucky strikes that I want to share with you guys. Um, one is actually, there's a really interesting story about this one, which has a lot to do with what I was talking about earlier about non superwash yarn. And one of them um, is a lucky strike that I kind of added a little something to just to give it a little something extra. So the first is this lucky strike here. This is called She Did What? <laughs> and I don't know why that came to me as being what I wanted to call this, but that's what it is. It's a really beautiful pale lilac um, color here and uh, really, really pale, almost bare yarn colors going through here. And I added some little speckles to it just to give it a little something extra. So this is called She Did What? And it is a lucky strike. There are only going to be two like this in the shop on Tuesday. So if you like it, definitely snag it fast because it's really beautiful. It's a really fun um, kind of subtle colorway and it's got a little punch to it there. I love this especially paired for whatever reason. I just love the way it looks paired um, with the workhorse low fidelity colorway. Um, I don't know, I just, I think that looks really cool together. Almost like you can make heels, cuffs, and toes with this one, and this would be your main color, or vice versa. I just really love this pairing. So, but that is a lucky strike that's going to be in the shop 
on Tuesday called She Did What? And then the second lucky strike was actually kind of a mishap, but more of, it's just a misfit. So as I mentioned a few times now, the non-superwash yarn takes the dye differently, less intensely. It almost comes out more uh, watercolor-like, uh, more blended, and in a lot of cases, much more muted. And that was what happened here big time with what I'm about to show you. So this was dyed with the exact same dye, the exact same technique as my Lights Through the Trees colorway, but it was dyed on my whist base. And I really need to kind of go back, and I take notes as I dye the yarn based on what's happening at that given dye session, just so I know, you know, what to tweak in the future, if I did something differently, what have you. Just keeps me, keeps me in tune with what exactly is going on in the dye studio at that time. So I did take some notes about this, and there are a few things that I'm going to try and tweak, but it just was so drastically different than the colorway it was meant to be. So this was meant to be Lights Through the Trees, which is this. And wait for it. It's really pretty amazing how drastically different it is. This is what we have. <laughs> so huge learning experience for me. Now, I'm going to take the Lights Through the Trees away because I feel like it gives you a little bit of a perspective on the the Lucky Strike yarn here um, maybe makes it look a little muddy because you're comparing it. And I was really worried about that at first when I saw this. I'm like, oh no, it's like, it's too blended. The colors are so muted. It almost has a chalky look to it. But then I was thinking like, if you're comparing it to this color, then yeah, that's definitely what you're seeing. But if you look at it in its own right and you see it by itself, it's actually really lovely. Um, my husband came out and he's like, hey, this is really cool. How did you do this? And I explained it to him. And he says, well, it almost kind of resembles like an unwashed chalkboard because it does have that milky kind of undertone to it, but it's really beautiful. And I imagine it in a knitted fabric or even caked up to see all of these colors kind of coming together. I don't know. I really, really love it. So this is going to be in the shop as a misfit or a lucky strike. I'm not sure how I'm going to list it. It really doesn't matter. It's considered a one of a kind right now um, just because it's so different from what it was intended to be, but it's really very beautiful. So this is the Whist Base 100% non-superwash merino yarn two ply. Really beautiful. So this is going to be one of the full skein lucky strikes in the shop as well as she did what? Will also be in the shop as a lucky strike. So that's it, you guys. That's what's coming to the shop on Tuesday. I'm super excited about all the sock sets, about the mini bundles, about some of these lucky strikes are a lot of fun. The kit that I'm creating with Darn Yarn MN in collaboration with Chelsea, I'm super excited about those. Those will be released on Friday in limited quantities, so definitely keep track of that. But I'm really excited about this update. I'm excited about every update. I, I get so attached to the colorways and to the yarn that I become really excited to share them with you guys. So definitely mark your calendars be there on Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Sign up for the newsletter ahead of time so that when promotions come out in the newsletter, which comes out before the update, you can be in the loop on that and you can get your discount at the time of the shop update. Also, don't forget when you check out, make sure you create a customer account because if you can create a customer account, next time you come back to buy yarn, you don't have to go through the whole billing information process. It gets saved to your account. I have zero access to that information. I have zero access to billing information. It's saved in the database so that it can be brought back out for you for simpler checking out and that's it. I do not have access to any of that information and that information is never shared, just FYI. So keep that in mind when you head over to the shop, sign up for the newsletter, check out the options that we have for cake winding. That's about it. I think that's all I've got. So that is fiberforthepeopleyarn.com. Shop update is coming Tuesday. All right, you guys, it's about time for me to head out. But before I go, I wanted to remind you of a little thing that we have going on over here at the Wool Needles Hands podcast that I'm really needing your guys' help with. It is called the Local Yarn Store Call to Action. And what that is, is where I elicit the help from the viewers to go out into the wild in their communities to their local yarn shops, get some photos, get some video, send it back to me here at woolneedleshands at gmail.com so that I can compile it into a little musical montage sharing the local yarn stores in all of our various different communities. I really, really enjoy doing this segment of the podcast. I haven't been able to do it lately. I don't have a lot of new footage. 
which has inspired me to head out to my other local yarn store that I haven't shared on the podcast called Sin City Knits. I'm going to be doing that next week and I'm going to be sharing that on the podcast. But in the meantime, if you're heading out to a local yarn store in your area or maybe you're traveling and you're going to be going to some local yarn stores there, send me the footage if you'd be so inclined so that I can share it here on the podcast and we can continue to broaden our view of the knitting community out in the world we live in. So that's something really important to the podcast, really important to me. So please help me out with that. Just send it over to the wool needles hands at Gmail email account. Well, it is time for me to go. Thank you guys again for hanging out with me for another episode of the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. I am eternally grateful to everybody who has subscribed and supported this channel, either new subscribers or people that have been subscribing and supporting the channel from the very beginning. As always, thank you so much. It couldn't be done without you. You guys keep this thing going. So please don't forget to thumbs up, like the video, subscribe if you like what you see here so we can continue to grow the knitting community, the crochet community, the fiber community here at the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. Thank you guys so, so very much. Until next time on episode 21 of the Wool Needles Hands Podcast, happy knitting, happy crocheting, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Have a wonderful weekend and week. See you at the shop update on Tuesday. See you for the next episode of the podcast. Goodbye.